Hello everyone, and as always, welcome back to Strategy Gaming Dojo, where we find, learn, and play one more turn of the great strategy games, and today we're back into War Plan Pacific. Uh, this is episode, I believe, of 15. We're moving right along. It is April 12th, 1942. Now, we've already moved quite a few forces, but I wanted to back up for a second, and I know you guys don't believe me when I say this, but every once in a while, I get something wrong with the new game. Uh, I, I don't quite get the exact information, and I always like to correct that right up the front. Uh, and thank you to the commenter who mentioned this, uh, and it's all about this garrison or active component to your units, okay? And let's look at this unit in beautiful Santa Barbara, and it says it's in active status, set to garrison. Okay, we've got it in active, it is set to garrison. Now you may remember in this Let's Play, there were several units, uh, infantry units, early on in the game that I set to garrison. And I said, okay, the reason I'm doing that is because when they're on garrison mode, they send back to your pool 25% of the stuff they would usually use. So production, oil, uh, manpower. They send that back to the pool because they're just on garrison status. They don't need it. Now, what is the downside of that? Well, they only have 50% of the firepower, 50% of the movement points. But that's okay. Like in certain places, like Santa Barbara, we're probably not going to get attacked by the Japanese. And so you may just be fine having them sit there in garrison status, and it does save you those very, you know, integral components uh, of your army. Um, but then I changed that because I thought the way the rule book read was the minute you turn these units active, they pull back down everything that you saved. Okay, so just as a very simple example, let's say we were saving one point of production or one point of oil each turn by not having these on active status, by having them on garrison. And let's say that you did that for 10 straight turns. So you've saved 10 and 10, okay? My understanding when I when I read over the rule book again was the minute you turn them active, it pulls out of your pool that 10 and 10 that you saved. Incorrect, incorrect. And again, thank you to the commenter that pointed this out. It does not do that. It only pulls what you're saving for one turn. So it would pull down one and one to reactivate them. So you would actually save nine in that circumstance, okay, of each uh, for having them on garrison status. So there actually is a real benefit to having some of these units that you don't expect to be in action anytime soon in garrison status. So apologize uh, for that. And let's, <laughs> while we're talking about it, set this bad boy to garrison and let's start saving some stuff. So he will now be on garrison. And you see that garrison status. Until we ship this out, and we're going to ship other stuff out with our uh, transports uh, before we send this unit, uh, they will be saving us, you know, uh, various components, right? It'll be saving each turn, and then we will turn it active eventually, I'm sure. And when we do, it will only take one turn of that stuff. So I just wanted to correct that up front. It's kind of a big concept. Uh, the Marines, interestingly enough, and I need to go back and read, Marines don't have that. It seems like Marines are always on active status. That Those, you know, dang Marines, the halls of Montezuma out there, they will not even go garrison on you. Um, this strategic, I'm going to go through all these again. I know we kind of did this last turn, but now with this new idea of garrison, I kind of want to think about some of these units a little deeper than I have been. Um, and so let's go look. So we've got the U.S. 27th Division down here. It's in act. Let's flip that to garrison. Uh, we are, uh, the group in L.A., the 40th Division's already on garrison. Okay. Um, Santa Barbara, we talked about that. Morrow Bay. Now, this is a headquarters unit, and so you can't really do that. But you see this. We haven't really talked about it. These headquarters have ca call tactical air offensive, repair and upgrade enabled within command range, uh, repair upgrade disabled within command range. So you can kind of do that from your headquarters. We'll talk more about that as headquarters become more and more important to us. Uh, what do we got here? This is also, uh, we just turned that to garrison status. Uh, San Francisco, 
we are on garrison status, okay. We've sent out two of the three divisions of what was originally a large core. Uh, we still have our battleships here repairing. They're all still one of four. It's taken a while. I mean, that's a lot of points to repair a battleship, it seems. Uh, the fourth bomber group is here, just itching to get out into the battle, uh, but sitting at San Francisco until we can get more transports. Up in Portland, we have this infantry core small... We've got them on active. Let's click them down to garrison. Uh, they will go a little later. In Seattle, we have a core large. Okay, that is on garrison status. Good job, us. Uh, and then in Vancouver, we've got garrison status set here. Uh, then, of course, we've got two days of supply left for the 18th Destroyer Squadron that's sitting here protecting Vancouver, Seattle. Um, okay. So that's the U.S. West Coast. I guess, you know, it wasn't that big of a deal, but it'll save us a little bit. Let's go, oh, that reminds me. So let's go up to Alaska then, because I think this Dutch Harbor, well, this is kind of a decision, right? Because if the Japanese show up up here, they're going to be in action right away. You know, I would imagine the Japanese are just going to come right here and try to attack. Oh, it's actually snowing up here in Alaska in April. I'm sure that's beautiful out on these islands. Maybe see some seals, some little penguins running around. Um, maybe we'll keep them active just because I think if they're going to get thrown into a battle, it's going to, you know, come right away. Uh, wait, whoa, where'd I go? Johnston Island, but I want to go up to Midway. There we go. Okay, Midway, I think... Um, yeah, we've got this on active. Now, this is a Marine Corps as well, and it called Garrison, but we've got it active. Uh, we're going to keep that active because, again, I think if the Japanese arrive there, it's immediate action for them. Um, but these units, I think we can click down in Lahaina and Hilo. I mean, I like to have them here, right? I'm not going to ship them out probably because, you know, if the Japanese do come to attack Pearl Harbor, we want to have as much around here as we can get. Uh, but that said, being said, you know, there's no reason they need to be active. I think we'll have some warning, whether it be from the planes or otherwise, that a Japanese task force is on the way. Uh, 24th Division here, we've got that on active. I think I will keep one active. So two garrison, one active here. Uh, we look through, you know, we're going to keep everything here for now uh, from a naval perspective. We've now got three carrier groups, a battleship group. We'll bring more battleships over, of course. We've got crew, uh, cruisers, destroyer squadrons, a lot of those, four actually. Uh, and we'll probably, well, depending on what we do with our carriers, we may need one with each carrier group, but I'll probably keep my carriers together. I like to do that in Pacific War Games. We've got an air superiority group that is here running cap over the top. We've got it on full support. So it's out here looking around in the rain. It is still raining in the Pacific. It has been a very rainy spring. Um, Canton, okay. This is on garrison status, which is kind of interesting to me. I, again, I almost feel like we should have it on active because it's going to, you know, I guess we'll have a turn. I don't know. Hmm, well, I guess we'll have a turn to turn it, but I'd rather this be active. And we've sent other things into garrison mode, so I think we've saved enough. We can do that. Uh, down here at Pago Pago, uh, we've got this on active. Now, this one could probably go in garrison. I mean, Canton is more at risk immediately, I believe, than Pago Pago. But we're going to go ahead and just leave that as is. Now we've got the U.S. 12th Light Cruiser and destroyer squadron we've already moved that this turn we're going to put this down at pago i do believe we may take it all the way to nomaya we shall see uh, as we get out to fiji we've got uh this new zealand eighth brigade they are now up to nine of ten on priority repairs and they are in active mode i like that we've also got these two carrier groups out here at suva because it has a level six port which, uh, okay, great. Uh, 114th Garrison here. It's on garrison status. Good, good. So that's a UK group uh, there. Uh, if we go down to New Zealand, I believe at Wellington here, uh, we've got them on garrison. What do we have going on at Auckland? We've got that one on active. Okay, well, let's keep one active just in case something weird happens. Uh, the 27th Destroyer Squadron we brought in to get some more supply. 
it's uh, beefing up. And then we have this unit here, this tactical group that's been back here trying to rebuild for a bit. This could be because we have that New Zealand infantry group also on priority. I mean, there's only so many New Zealand units out here. If you've got too many of them on priority, uh, it's not going to build up as fast. This is now at 9 of 10. I'm going to take that off priority. Uh, and as it naturally hopefully gets up to 10 of 10, uh, that'll be great. But I'd much rather get the planes raring to go out over Suva. Uh, if we go down to Nomaya, we've got this infantry division, 10 of 10. It's the uh, United States division. Okay, it's double entrenched. It's got engineers. This thing's raring to go. It's on active status. Um, and we've got a cruiser, light cruiser, destroyer squadron out here. Uh, what did at Suva? I did I look? Yeah, okay, we looked at all that. Um, fine, all right. So we've moved pretty quickly here. Uh, we are bringing units up to Milne Bay. We are also marching this guy across the island to Lay. Uh, we've got this Moresby unit here. Make sure that's on active status. That could get it some. Uh, action any moment uh it's at 10 of 10 sitting there pretty nicely but we got to get some u.s units up here to help it out uh we do have the arizona which is making me nervous it's only a two of four here it's within japanese bombing range and we know we know that they've got some bombers or they did have some bombers up here so unless they've moved them somewhere else we just can't see them or you know we should have a decent detection level up here uh, we had that comment point last time or the unit that we put out there it is now gone uh so we'll see we'll see um this uh, air group got into a scrap with the Japanese, that same Japanese uh, air, I believe, unless these are carriers, right? Uh, and as you can see, we could do airstrikes on these if we wanted to. I think we'll hold off on that. Uh, we'll, we'll just, we'll wait a little bit uh, because naval air, they're not that strong at all. They're better really at tactical bombing, but I've got them here for their air combat score, just running cap over Port Moresby. Uh, okay. Uh, why is this on garrison status? I do not want that on garrison status. We'll have to flip that first thing next turn. Um, at Carnes, we've got it on active. We're going to put that on garrison. At Townsville, I will stay active here at uh, Townsville. It's a huge, you know, uh, bullseye for the Japanese. If they could land in Townsville, they really, really start to mess with us. We've got the Houston and the Colorado sitting here at Townsville. Uh, at Brisbane, we're on garrison status. You can see that by the different NATO icon. Uh, at Sydney, we are active, I believe. No, it's on garrison. Okay, we're all good. We're all good. We've got the Com Canberra here, and we've got the Pike repairing. Uh, and so the submarine squadron Pike is uh, currently repairing. Uh, Melbourne, we can definitely take that down to garrison. Uh, I don't expect any action in Melbourne, although those are famous last words. We've got these units moving up the road. I think we can put Darby on garrison. Um... We'll put these on garrison when they get to their destination. One's going to Darwin, one's going to Port Hedland uh, for now. Uh, at Darwin, we will keep this active. It's just too important. We now have the Ramillies and the Deroiter down here to you know, give a little naval cover. And we've got this Australian First RAAF Air Group that's up. It's now at 13 of 20. It's on priority repairs. It's getting healthy in a hurry, uh, which is a good thing which is a good thing. It's uh, tactical bombers, 5-5 five, five, uh, on the air combat and tactical bombing. Um, naval air, it's a three. It's okay. It's not great. We need better naval air. Oh, look. So I, I you know, this maybe is where we're fighting and that's actually maybe a good thing. I, you know, this has a better tactical bombing than it does naval. And so I would rather them, you know, not be fighting out over the uh, water. Now, I get that that's to hit naval ships, but I think you get my meaning. Um, all right, Darby, we can put that. I think on Perth here, we can go down to garrison status. I like that. And we do have the Valiant in here. And the Valiant, very strong surface ship, a 10, okay, and a 9 defense. So we've got the Valiant just sitting here, uh, making sure the Japanese don't... Don't try to take advantage of our uh, defenses at Perth. 
Uh, in the Philippines, we continue to hold on here. Uh, inexplicably, they have not come harder at us here. We have a submarine with seven days of supply. Very nice out here. Grayling sub-squadron uh, sitting here. Uh, we'll see. It's, you know, trying to hit a South China Sea escort uh, or transport uh, or convoy, I should say. Uh, nothing doing yet, though. We still not have not destroyed any of those. Uh, the Japanese control all of Borneo. They control all of Celebus. They now, uh, you know, control West Papa. Uh, we, down here at Moresby, control Papua New Guinea. That's the only island really out here that we've got. They're down at Dili. I mean, they're threatening everywhere, uh, up through Java, up through Sumatra. Uh, they're down the Malayan pen Peninsula, and they've now taken Singapore. Uh, we have this comment point out here. We did this, uh, you know, with the British, and now we can see they've got dive bombers out here. They do have an air group. We're not exactly sure what it is, but now we know they have two air groups out here. Uh, we can see the strength of one of their units. Not this one, though. Uh, intel is low out here, guys. Let's get it higher. I, I spent a comment point. I want higher intel. Uh, they did attack us here at Yenning, Yenning Wong last time. Uh, we do have two units and another unit coming over here for support. We also have the Indian 1st Air Force. Uh, they're now up to 16 and 20, and so I took them off priority repairs. They're, they're looking pretty good. They're an 8 in air combat. Not bad at all, and we got them at full support. We also have a Chinese unit over here. Um, we've got these units kind of trying to block the road up to Chittagong. Uh, which is important. I guess I could move this one down here, but I'm not really sure, you know, I don't know if that's necessary. I just don't want them to be able to attack a unit twice. So the more that we can go here, I mean, I guess they still could though, right? I just didn't want them to be able to get around it and maybe attack, you know, multiple times. This unit now could only be attacked, I believe. Let's look at the hexes, how they line up. Yeah. The way the hexes line up, it can only be attacked from right there, right? Uh, and so that is an advantage to move him up. I don't like this, you know, that's one stretched across here. But we do have the Brits on the way! Uh, this unit we're going to move down here is kind of back up. We do have a uh, commander out here. This is George Giffard. He's going to move a little further south. And we're going to move this unit down into Chittagong. And that's a stronger unit, right? That's a three uh, on combat effectiveness. Oh, that reminds me. So there was a question that came up, and it was on my page, and I apologize for not answering this sooner. And then um, on the Facebook page, uh, like Computer War Games Facebook page, uh, the same question was asked. And... I just want to talk about it for a second because it's actually a very good question. And there was some confusion over the fact. Now, you know, you know, infantry is a good example and not a good example all at the same time. And I'll explain what I mean by that in just one second. Let's look at an air unit here, okay? It's an air superiority group, all right? It's got an eight air combat. It's got a two tactical one naval air, uh, one anti-sub, one two anti-air, you know, so on and so forth. But the main thing to look at here for an air superiority group is air combat. It's an eight, a level eight. But if you look over here, it says air combat three. And if you look at the counter, and we'll zoom in, it's got an air combat score of three, okay? And so the question was, why the discrepancy? Why does it say air combat eight? And here it says air combat three. What's going on? I don't, you know, understand what's going on there. I think it's a great question. It is a little confusing. And Alvaro, uh, the developer, Alvaro Sousa, actually, you know, came on to answer it. Um, but, you know, gosh, I don't want to say this like the guy made the game. But I, I want to maybe even simplify his answer even more. And I think the best way to do that is to look at an infantry unit, Okay. An infantry unit has an artillery score of four, or this one does, has an artillery score of four, guns three, firearms four. That's all blended together, okay, into an attack, a defend, and how well they fight in rugged terrain score, 
Okay, so, you know, this 434, and I always do them backwards because artillery shoots first, then guns, then firearms. So, 434, when you blend all that together, it has a one attack and a one defend. Okay, what do I mean by that? I always think of these as strength points. This is how much this unit can deal damage in strength points. These are just the stats that go into making that. And so if you go to an air superiority unit, I think of it the same way. It has an eight air combat score. Okay, fine. But they blend that together. And when you get it boiled down to strength points and how many strength points of damage it can deal, that's a three right so these are really on a 1 to 10 scale now i say it's 1 to 10 it's actually could be a little higher than that because if we look at the prince of wales the prince of wales actually has a 12 for surface score but that is the only score i've ever seen in the game that's above a 10 okay and so really just think of this as a 1 to 10 scale here and this just tells you from 1 to 10 how powerful or how skilled these units are at certain things then that's all boiled down into a witch's brew and then the cake comes out on the other side and it says it can essentially deal three points of strength point damage when you think of it in strength points or at least that's how i think of it um and that's why there's a discrepancy between those numbers okay hopefully that makes sense if it's still a little unclear just let me know in the comments and we'll talk more about it um i'm a little worried here because this unit's on the move. I'm tempted. Now, see, he's already dug in, though. That's why he's dug in twice. I'm definitely not moving him. He's entrenched twice. I do think I want to do a little blocking over here because I eh, I could move the air unit, too. I guess there's nothing stopping me from moving the air unit because ultimately these are all in range. He's got a range of six, so one two three four five six pretty much everything's in range okay so that just made my decision a little easier i'm going to just move the air unit up there and i'll actually move this ground unit over to the urban area right next to a chinese force that can also help us block there now he's double entrenched i'm not moving him uh he's not entrenched yet but he's behind two rivers and i like that uh we did get a british unit up here uh, this time, the transports dropped him off, and uh, here he is. It is the 11th East African Division. Uh, we have the Indian 44th Brigade sitting here in Calcutta. It is active. That's good. This unit is active, of course. We just dropped it off, and we now have this British general on the way. It is Archibald Wavell. I'm obviously very excited about that. Uh, <laughs> all right, let's get Wavell. Can we throw him on the rail? We can. All right, excellent. Let's get him coming around here to Dhaka. All right. And uh, we'll start to move this British unit up and push back on Burma a little bit, hopefully. Or in Burma. Not on Burma. We want to save you, Burma. Uh, none of this stuff really has to move. I think maybe this Colombo. Yeah, we can set that over to Garrison, though. Um, he's sitting out here with two days of supply. He's helping our convoys, our escorts. We still, and we just looked at this a second ago, have the Hermes, the Repulse. The Prince of Wales is getting better. Uh, the Cornwall out here, that all looks fine. Let's go down to East Africa because this is actually becoming quite important. We cannot embark them. Uh, we do not have, and if we look at the UK, we've got 10 transport. We're, we've got 10 in use, so we can't. Uh, use that. Um, they were in use this turn taking this unit up here. It, we won't get them back until we flip the turn, right? Okay, that's how that works. Uh, I also wanted to look down here near the Australian outbox or the, we I guess the West Coast. We get out of the penalty box if we're talking ice hockey. Uh, we'll get out of here. Next turn, we have some U.S. troops coming through here. We've already got a U.S. unit on the ground. we got to turn that active, the 41st Division. I haven't decided yet whether that should go to Milne Bay or to Lay first. Probably Lay, although, man, if they get into Milne Bay, that's a bad deal. But I think I don't want to sail a transport up into here. I'd rather take it to Milne Bay and then get it to, you know, 
get anything that's escorting it the hell out of there. Uh, so we'll do that next time. The last thing we need to do this time, uh, and again, we're good in the Philippines. I'm not moving a damn thing, and I'm not turning anything to garrison. We're live wire. They're live active, is up here in China. And I've been contemplating. I think we go ahead and, and attack this unit. Ugh. It's only three to two odds, though. I'm just afraid the Chinese are going to break through, or the Chinese, the Japanese are going to break through here and save him somehow. They could even move one, two, and probably link him up to supply, and now all of a sudden we're really uh, hurting there. So maybe, mm, maybe I will, maybe I will attack here. Let's click off of that, and let's go back to this. We'll hold shift down. That would bring in all three. Let's go ahead. He's double entrenched here. Wow. Let's go ahead and smoke him if we can. And we can't. Dang it. Uh, shoot. If we go here and we try that again, it's again three to two odds. I feel like, man, maybe we got a bad dice roll last time. I don't know. Uh, but we did lose a strength point here. That only takes him down to 19 of 30. But we've talked about this. The strength points for the Chinese unit doesn't. Yeah, that's not the biggest deal in the world uh, because they shatter quite easily. They now can get a double attack on us here at Changsha. I do not like that at all. Um, I've been contemplating how do I need to get a unit down here. We cannot allow them to do a triple attack there. So I think we're going to have to shift everything down. I don't see any other way out of it. Uh, could we bring this by rail? No, we don't have. No, that's road. That's not rail. Uh, if we had a unit sitting here, we could maybe bring it up by rail, but I don't think we really have that option. Now, I would rather bring this two of five over. I actually want them to switch places, don't I? I and get the commander here. He still gets, well, I don't know. Is that true? Let's see. One, two, three, four. Yeah, that would only put him at five. Okay, so they've now switched places. And he's still got all of our units in command and all of these. That's a big command range. Um, and I think I'm going to move you there. All right. And this, gosh, I'm just contemplating what I should do with this unit. Um, I feel like they're easily going to be able to shatter that anyway. But I just kind of want to slow them down. Uh, let's move north for a second, because I was thinking maybe we'll kind of, I don't know if the offensive is the right word, but I was thinking maybe we'll move some of these, uh, red Chinese are, and let's look at the supply situation. Eh, I don't want to get him that bad off on supply. We'll move him back actually, but this guy, I thought I might get a little more adventurous with and maybe bring him down here, uh, something like that. Uh, he's still in command range for now, so we'll see what happens. Uh, we've got our two units here sitting here. This looks good, although they got a seven and seven here for combat effectiveness to push into us. So eh, we'll see about that. Um, these guys, they're all set up nicely. I guess I could bring. Eh, I don't want to get too thin up here. We do have another commander sitting here at Chongqing. We also have this unit at Chengdu, but it's only a five strength. This guy, I had him up here because he's in the plains and he's better in, you know, he's better in clear. He's a cavalry unit, right? Um, okay, I think I'm going to leave everything else the same for now. I'm very tempted to move that here and just shift the entire line. But he's now doubly entrenched. He's doubly entrenched. If I was going to do anything, I should probably bring this unit down uh, and do something with that. But I think I'm going to have to leave everything the same this time and just kind of wait it out. Uh, I'm very concerned they're going to get into this hex, though. Then they've got a triple attack on Cheng Sha, and that puts us in really, really bad shape there. Uh, out here, I mean, we're looking fine. The Japanese aren't really doing anything, so uh, that looks perfectly fine. As a matter of fact, they've gone to garrison mode here in some of these places. Uh, they're just like, whatever. I mean, you know, there's there seems to be no risk. Uh, we could potentially move this unit up here and start to threaten uh, this unit from this side. Four, five... Maybe I'll do that for a turn, and we'll see if they'll even start to move. If they do, we'll get him right back here very quickly, but I think we'll go threaten there. All right, 
uh, we'll look at our convoys very quickly. Uh, the UK could be sending out quite a bit more oil uh, again. I, you know, uh, it's it's much more important the Brits have oil than it is, you know, India or Australia in some respects. So we're just going to keep that as is. The U.S. could be sending more of everything. Um, just looking here. We've got no more Merch Marines. We're building some, but we just have no more right now. I don't know. I, I'm tempted to send a little oil out because now it seems like the Brits are doing okay. Let's go to the build and see... Yeah, they're getting five oil each time, but it's five upkeep. So they're just kind of staying the same here. Uh, I think we're just going to leave that the same. We've already built with the U.S. here. As you can see, the U.S. stockpile is 46. Uh, that actually bumped up because we put things in garrison mode because that was one before I looked at it before the episode. So they're up to a 46. U.K. sitting on 64. Uh, do, 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 do. You know, um, let's go look at a few of these ports. Rangoon, no. Um, Calcutta is considered an Indian port. Okay, I just want to make sure that was not considered UK. If it was, I was going to go ahead um, and put anti-aircraft in there if I could. Let's get off the screen, actually. I don't think the Indians have any anti-aircraft. They do not. Uh, I guess the Brits, they, yeah, they don't have any anti-aircraft at all. The U.S., let's go see out at um, Pago Pago. If I can find it, let's try to find Pago. There's Suva, so I know Pago's right over here. Do Nope, they don't have any yet. Okay, okay, well, it is what it is. Uh, we're going to go ahead and run the turn then, because I think we've built everything we can. Uh, UK still got 64 in the stockpile, US 46. The Russians, of course, have quite a bit. Uh, the Chinese building towards another unit, I hope. Uh, the Australians actually have enough to build something. Uh, interesting. Okay. I guess I didn't look at the Australians yet. Do the Australians want some Marines? Can they even, yeah. They, they need a 130. They need 234, 156. Hell, maybe we hold off for that because that's like two divisions. You get a little bit of a, you get a little bit of a bonus by building them as an, you know, it costs, it doesn't quite cost double, right? Uh, it In logistics and manpower, it costs the same as two divisions, uh, but for production, it doesn't. I think I'll wait and I'll, I'll build an infantry corps small uh, and do it that way. Uh, the Aussie Aussies could also potentially build and you know some kind of air unit, but that's a little expensive, I think, for them at this point. All right, let's run the turn. I'm going to do one thing before we do that, though. I'm going to go into the options and I'm going to speed this up just a hair. Uh, my attack delay I'll keep on three. That's not a big deal, but we'll we'll move these down just a little bit so it moves just a little faster. Um, okay, and we're going to center over China, and we'll say in turn and see what happens. I'm really worried about Changsha. That's where they got me worried now, and I've, you know, I've said a few negative things about the AI, but I don't know if that's fair. I mean, if they take Changsha here, uh, and they move on Moresby, that's pretty, I still think they should take the Philippines and throw everything it takes into taking the Philippines, uh, but they will have ha they will have six or seven of the major units on the map. Oh boy, they just hit our sub out here, so they had they had intelligence on it. Ooh, all right. Now they see the other sub. It looks like they just bombed it. This will be an interesting... Now, neither one of those subs sunk, it appears, yet, right? Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Uh, should throw the yet in there. Yeah, so this is moving just a little faster. You can tell. I think this is actually maybe a really good speed, around 2, uh, because, you know, we're flipping, but it's not like it's moving so fast that you, you know, uh, have a seizure uh, it's just not, you know, it's not blinking at you and all of a sudden the turn's done. You can kind of see what's going on. Oh, now they did start to move down here because we moved out of this city, I 
think. Either that or they're moving straight up here to put even more pressure on Cheng Sha. Uh, not liking this. They've, they've got us under a lot of pressure there. Uh, now I'm starting to think maybe we move out here a little bit and start to put a little pressure around the backside uh, here. Yep, they did attack us there. They took one. They were coming across the river. Ooh, we just had an Indian unit absolutely get to shattered out there. Uh, wow, that unit hung on. Man, am I glad that we moved here. They had to attack across the river into bad terrain. Of course, we'll go look at that. I think we will have had this unit isolated long enough this time, and we should be able to break that, and I may have to bring that stronger unit down there. Ooh, please don't sink another sub. Right now, we're at 2-2 two to two on sub squadrons being sunk. We've sunk two Japanese. They've sunk two of ours. Uh, let's not fall behind three sets to two. Oh, here they come attacking again. Now, they took the worst of that battle. They attacked twice. Ooh, three times? I don't know. I, I saw three different times the numbers represented, but it seems that we held on there, which would be somewhat surprising, honestly. But let's hope. Got to hang on to Chang Shaw. I'm surprised they haven't brought a really strong unit, you know, here and here. Now, this one is stronger. It's like a three, right? It's a three. I'm surprised they haven't brought a really like a seven and then had this five, you know, really come after this strong. That's what I'm doing as a Japanese player for sure. Oh, we're getting bombed at Devo now. So maybe they are going to come after the Southern Philippines. And that's it. That's the end of the turn. I think that actually worked out fairly well for us. Uh, allies deliver resources to China via the air hump from Lido to Kunming. Excellent. So even though the Burma Road has gotten shut down, this is another scenario design thing that you can read in the uh, original lead into the scenario. Uh, that Lido to Kunming will fly transports over the Himalayas to get production and oil into China. UK gets 10 more in transport. US gets 10. Hey, all right. Convoy attack. Okay, that's how they knew we were here. We attacked a convoy. Uh, the Grayling did out in the South China Sea uh, with one group. Again, zero and zero. I don't know. We still have not gotten anything there. Um, Supply convoy attacked at 8834, destroying zero stockpile. Huh. Well, we'll have to go look at that. Fleet has low. Fleet has low. Okay. Convoy attack versus UK route. Okay. This uh, submarine squadron, a Japanese submarine squadron, in the Indian Ocean convoy lane with two groups. It's saying one merchant marine and zero escorts. And then they did it again with zero and zero. Okay, these submarine attacks, I'll have to say, aren't the most effective. At least they're not from our side. The uh, Japanese have done much better than we have. Uh, let's go look at what has low supply. Oh, it's just this unit. That'll just go right back into Seattle. Okay. This also, well, that's too bad because we need everything we can get out here, evidently, on the Indian line. Now, do we see... The sub? Yeah, we do. There it is. And I think what we're going to do is move the Hermes out here because it can bomb it. Uh, be, you know, it's got it. My understanding is it has to be on the convoy line, but then it can bomb it air wise. And so we're going to move that out here in a minute. But first of all, I think, well, why don't we do this? We just move the Exeter in there. We are not taking the Prince of Wales. <sighs> Let's take the repulse with us. Uh, that just gives us, you know, some surface, some anti-sub, some anti-air, just in case things get weird down here. Now, uh, the Hermes, that's going to have a range of three, right? Yeah, it does. So let's get down here within three. And let's see if we can bomb this thing. If we can't, we're going straight back to port. Uh...
Hmm. Oh, we do have Oilers now. Of... Uh, not sure why we can't bomb this thing. Maybe it has something to do with the Hermes. Or maybe it's because... Uh, does it need to be all on its own? Because I know you can't surface attack it, right? I get that. It's in raider mode. You can't, or any subs, you can't surface attack them. Uh, but I don't understand why this light carrier squadron could not attack. We've got it on bomb naval. Uh, we've got it on fleet mode. Repair upgrade. Okay. It's got... It seems to have everything it needs. I'm just not understanding that. We're going to come back to that. Uh, I'm going to get an answer to that this turn. I'm going to. I don't care if I have to email Alvaro. I'm going to try to understand why we can't bomb that with naval. I was sitting on the convoy lane. Okay. Um, now it could have. Okay, we still have our movement points here. It could have something to do with. You know, I move one. And I move it down here. Okay. Now we're in two. But why wouldn't I able, be able to bomb it here? Now I've got all, all of them. I better get that back in a hurry. Uh, but, okay. Can't bomb it there. Okay. Let's undo that again. Now then, let's just take the carrier and see if that changes things. All right. Take it down here. Now can he... Can't occupy... Okay. Okay, I'm going to find out an answer to that, because that, that's not making sense to me. I know you can attack them by air. Now, maybe that only means air you... I, no, it couldn't, because they're attacking our sub over here in the South China Sea with um, what has to be air assets. It has to be, because they can't attack with the surface fleet. We're in raider mode. I mean, even if we were... They, we cannot be attacked by a surface fleet here. So... Do we have to be right next to it? I don't know, but first of all, we got to get the grayling out of here. So let's let's do uh, first things first here. Uh, let's take it down. Do I want to take it this way or that way? Or maybe even all the way back to Pearl? Nah, I don't really want to go that way. Probably want to go towards Sydney. Let's go out and around this way. Ooh. Not quite that close. Let's get down here. We'll kind of hide over here by Darwin. Or actually, you know what? We'll just put it in port at Darwin. It can't repair there, but that's okay. It's it's protected in port. So we'll put it there, and then we'll take it around to Sydney. Um, okay, we'll come back to that Hermes thing. Now, what is what did that say? Port. Oh, it's being blockaded. Got it. Okay, cool. Let's go. I'm ready. Uh, this unit needs to go to active, right? And it can't move. Hmm. All right. That's getting a little dicey there. We may have to bring, I, maybe I should have moved it up there, even in garrison. But then I'm like, well, I don't know. Then it could get attacked. That was actually a difficult decision that I probably should have given more thought to. Okay, here comes this transport group that's being escorted by the Maryland. So let's get up here. And gosh, do I take it all the way to Lay? Whoo, that seems risky. Or do I just go in at Milne Bay and take this guy down there. Uh, I think I'm gonna go all the way to Lay. Okay, let's disembark, all right. And they can't attack us in port. Um, <laughs> that's taking our chances there. We do need to get the Arizona out of here, I'll tell you that much. Let's get that down here back to Sydney. Um, and that's good. Okay, we dropped off there. Now this was escorting, now we've disembarked and it's set in garrison status. So it came across here in garrison. Uh, I think, you know, that was my mistake kind of thinking what I thought before. This is now active. We may end up switching these two, but for now we've got something in it lay and I am happy about that. Um, Townsville, I'm just gonna leave those guys alone. Okay, we'll come back to all that. Partisans in Comron. We've got partisans in Tsingtao. 
partisans in outside of Tsingtao uh, and to the southwest of Shanjin. Okay, all looks fine. Uh, what else? Oh, we had this submarine down here, the Cerro Squadron. All right. Uh, they are sitting on a three of three. I think I'm going to put them in the Indonesian line. I, I think the Japanese have to be bringing something through the Indonesian line. So we're going to go up this way. This is the Indonesian line. But they're supplying things out here somehow. Uh, this is all Indonesian line. So, yeah, we're going to do that. Oh, let's get that over into... Oh, you know what? Can we do... Let's go back here for a second. Let's put that in. Oh, you have to do it right at the start. Shoot. That was my bad. Um, all right. Well, we'll be fine, I think, for a turn. We're just going to have him go sit up here. He could almost get bombed up there, though. What's this one? Is this? That's Indonesian line as well. Yeah, I don't know if I take those kind of chances. I guess I am. Uh, we're going to put him right in there. We'll turn him to raider mode next time. Just remember, you got to do that before you move him. That was my bad. Uh, okay. Let's, where do we go now? Oh, deployment screen. That's where we start. Uh, the UK had transports that came out. And if we look at the build screen now, they've got 20 in transport. Excellent. Uh, the US now has 30 in transport. We're only using 10. So we've got, we can move a few units out of there. Um, so we had that come in, nothing deploying and, you know, fully deploying till next turn, 81st West African. Okay. The U S has the cut. Whoa. Look at all this. We've got the cutlass, uh, suicide squad. No, it's a submarine squad. My friend, uh, let's go over here to the West coast and let's put it down in, I don't know, San Diego, maybe deploy. Let's put it in San Diego. There we go. In you go. And, uh, oh, we've got this air defense that's ready. Okay. Actually, yeah, okay. Where all can we put this? This is fun. I don't know. Who's got air defense? Who doesn't have air defense? Now, I think I just accidentally, let's right click here. Let's get out of this screen, actually. Let's get out of that. Let's see. San Diego. I don't see that it has any air defense. Okay, so let's put one in each. Now I pulled out some of these in each. Now I wanna put some back in, but I think I only need one, let's say in San Diego, one in LA, one in San Francisco, and one in Seattle, okay? And that leaves us with four, and where else could we put them? Uh, we could put one in Honolulu, and let's put one in, do I put one in Canton? Canton, I should say, Canton, there we go. Uh, let's put one in Pago Pago. We could put one in Canton, but before I do that, I wanna make sure, can I put one in Suva? I can, all right. So you can put them out here. Uh, Nomaya, excellent. Shoot, now I kinda wanna put one in Moresby. Um, I think I needed a lot more in Moresby than I do in Seattle, right? Uh, let's go here to Seattle. Now you can see it here. You can redeploy it. Let's redeploy that one. I think I would rather have it in Port Moresby if I can put it out there. And we're going to go see next time. But now we've got some anti-air. Ooh, I like that. Now that we know that we can put it other places, that's exciting. Uh, deploy, redeploy. Does it come out next time? It does. Okay, so we'll have it again next time. And we built some more that will show up in June. Ah, shoot. I'm almost tempted to redeploy everything on the West Coast again. I know I probably should have thought of that, but I honestly didn't think maybe I could deploy them. Uh, at bases that aren't quote unquote US bases, but it looks like you can. And there are more important places. We've got air cover at both of these places. Let's actually go back and redeploy these American ones and we can uh, then do that next turn. To the extent there are places we can't put them, we will uh, figure that out. You know, we'll come back and look at all of this again. Uh, we've got none on the US West Coast now, so hopefully they don't come attack us there, but I'm not expecting it. 
Uh, let's look some more at the deploy, because, man, that got me all excited. Next time we get a new battleship division, we get two new infantry divisions. Um, this is April 26th. Okay, we won't quite get these, I guess, until actually, well, it's 14 days, right? Yeah, so we will get it, right, at the May 10th. It will be the May 10th turn next time. Um, yeah, we got a lot of stuff on the way, and then we'll have even more anti-air. We'll put this stuff in on the U.S. West Coast, probably. I think you can have to up to two at each location. I think I'm right about that. Oh, I did... Well, let's keep going down this. Um, anything else ready to deploy? deploy? Not there. Australian's going to get some more. They also built some anti-air. Um, nothing there, nothing there. Oh, the Lahore Division. Okay. Out in India. Well, that's helpful. Uh, we're starting to really build up here in India, and I like it. Um, hmm. Well, all right. Let's put them down right there. That looks good to me. Why not? Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, that's in command. Just making sure that was in command. Okay, so that's excellent. New Zealand has nothing. Philippines, uh, not quite next turn, but turn after that, we'll get even another division on the Philippines. Um, okay, before we go into the combat log and so forth, I think I'm going to call this an episode. Things are getting really interesting right here in China. We may want to build some more anti-air, maybe some in Chongqing. You can see the anti-air. We have some in Changsha. Uh, let's go out here and look. It, no, my, yeah, look at that. We got some anti-air here at Nomaya. I wonder if it takes a turn to actually take effect. Uh, we'll have to see. Embark. Okay, we've got all these transports now that we can start moving around. We also, oh, before I go, I do want to move this one ship out here. I was like, yeah, let's get this into port somewhere. Um, I'm going to just bring it in here to Pago. Pago's a level four port, so it can handle two, or it can handle up to four naval groups we've only got two here so that's fine okay this has been strategy gaming dojo i had a great time hell i'm learning something every episode i will find out an answer to that Hermes, uh the light carrier uk light car carrier question because if we spotted that sub out there if we're in the combat uh in the convoy lane and we're within attack distance now i do wonder does it take two full operation? I don't think it shouldn't take two full operation points, right? It should only take one to attack with the planes. And the other thing I wonder is with the Hermes, it's showing that the carrier planes are only at 10%. I really don't know what that means uh, per se. I, I Let's you know make sure but this is the light carrier group it's anti-sub is two it's anti-air is one okay uh air combat i mean it's not very good right i mean and and the planes are showing at 10 percent. i'm gonna go read up about this because i'm just not quite sure how that works um obviously we just haven't been able to figure that out i say we i haven't been able to figure this out yet and we're only using one movement point down here now does it take it shouldn't take two to attack, so I don't know. I don't know what I'm missing here, uh, but we will find out. All right, this has been Strategy Gaming Dojo. Thanks for joining me. Have a good one. Uh, I'll talk to you next time.